Hey guys, welcome back to another set of papers. In this one, we'll be looking to tackle the Jan 2019 IGCSE for Edexcel. And in particular, this is the 1HR. If you guys got any other requests for other uh, different paper series, please let me know. I'm going to start putting up polls soon so you guys can actually choose which papers you want me to do next. And we can talk about it as well as a community. But anyway, we're going to jump straight into the question now, okay? Alright, number one. Show that 1 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 3 quarters equals 4 and 5 twelfths. Okay, so you, obviously they want you to do this without your calculator. But, of course, you can always abuse your calculator in some, some areas. What I personally recommend is literally input this in your calculator. So, using the mixed fraction button, 1 and 2 thirds, which will give us 5 thirds. Again, this is just convenient. 2 and 3 quarters, which will give us, let's see, a 11 quarters. I mean, if you don't want to do that, you could always do 1 times 3 and add plus 2, which will give us 5. Or 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 3, which will give us 11. You can do it manually, but I think it's best to just use a calculator. And now lastly, all we want to do is make common denominators. Because we know the end goal is 12. To get the left fraction to 12, you're going to multiply up and down by 4. To get the right fraction to 12, you need to multiply up and down by 3. And doing so, on the left hand side, if you times up and down by 4, you're going to get 20 over 12 plus times in the right side by 3, 33 over 12. And now essentially you're just going to add up the top half, which will give us 53 over 12. And of course, if you want to convert this to a mixed fraction, well, you don't even have to bother. Just copy the answer. So it'll be 4 and 5 twelfths. Easy. Okay, number two. So there are 60 children in a club. <laughs> okay now this is different something different in the club the ratio of the number of girls to the number of boys is three to one so essentially you always add up how many parts there are so there's going to be four parts through that because that's three plus one and now this tells us you know in terms of the six children that three out of the four parts represent girls of the 60 children so we say all right three out of four so three cores of 60 are girls and three cores of 60 is 45 so that's 45 girls. And that, and that leaves us with one quarter of 60, which is going to represent the boys, which is 15 boys. If you want to work this out like easy in your calculator, just put 3 over 4 times 60, if you're not too sure sometimes. Now, let's follow this up. On the next line, it says 3 fifths of the girls play a musical instrument. So 3 fifths of the 45 play a musical instrument. So 3 fifths of 45. Again, you can put this in a calculator, and this should give us... Uh, let me just, I should do this mentally. So it should give us 27, play music. Whereas 4 fifths of boys, and that's 4 fifths of 15. So 1 fifth is 3 times 4, which is 12. So 12, play musical instrument. Now it tells us here, what fraction of the 60 children play musical instrument. So first things first, how many play musical instrument altogether? Well, if you add up these two numbers, you're going to get 39 kids play musical instrument. Out of 60, so 39 out of 60, is literally what they're looking for. Now, you should probably simplify this. And if you do, you're going to get 13 out of 20. All right, number three, guys. So in triangle PQR, so that's basically the whole shape across. Um, S is the point on PR such that the angle RSQ, so PR is um, this long line here. And angle RSQ, so star RSQ is right angle, so it's 90 degrees. Now it tells us three other pieces of information. You've got RQ, which is here, 14, RS, which is down near 10, and PS, which is, or SP, which is 5. Okay, so work out the length of PQ. In other words, work out this unknown length here. Now the best way to do these kind of questions, and if you look at it carefully, we've got two right angle triangles. So you could just literally use Pythagoras' theorem on the first right angle triangle to work out this unknown length here, and use it again to work out the second triangle. So let's take out the right triangle for a second here. Yeah? We're just literally going to use Pythagoras on this one. Now to use it, the formula is so easy. It's always a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two shorter lengths and c is the long hypotenuse, in other words, the diagonal length opposite the right angle. So now, now putting this in a formula, <coughs> we're going to have y squared plus 10 squared must equal 14 squared. And all you guys got to do is just sub minus 10 squared across. So y squared equals 14 squared minus 10 squared. And then square root your answer to get y. And when you do that, you guys should get duh, 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 
uh, y equals 4 root 6. Now, I'm just going to leave in this form because that's what the calculator told me, yeah? So, let's not, we won't change that for a second. And now we repeat for the second part here. So, now we've got x squared. So, we can say that uh, using the same idea. So, you've got a squared, which we can say is 5. So, 5 squared plus a y squared, which is 4 root 6. So, 4 root 6 squared must equal x squared. Again, literally put this all in the calculator and then square root to find x. So, so because you have 4 root 6 in your calculator ready, just use that answer button, yeah? So, you can say um, answer squared plus 5 squared and square root that and you should get a nice 11. And that's it, guys. That's literally the solution. So, we've got A, A, B and 40 are four numbers. So, we don't know if they're in order. <laughs> but it tells us now that A is the least number and 40 is the greatest number. So, yeah. We can assume that all these numbers are going in order, where the first one, where the first two A's are the smallest, then it's B, then it's 40. Alright, next bit. So the range of the four numbers is 14. Range tells us the difference between the, the highest and, the, and the, the, the biggest and the smallest value. So in other words, the difference between the highest, which is 40, and the difference between the smallest, which is A, is going to equal 14. Now that's easy to solve, yeah? So literally, um, you can just do in your calculator, 40 take away 14, and that should give us 26. So A is 26. That's cool. The median of the four numbers is 30. So median is, is basically the number bang in the middle. So in other words, here. So between A and B. So if, to, to make it very easy, the, a little trick is that you just pick the two values. So in this case, we're concentrating on A, which is 26, and B. And we know that it's somewhere in between them. The best way to do this is to basically add these two numbers, half them, and you should get the value in between, which is 30. Now you just solve this equation. And to solve it, you firstly clear the fraction, so times 2 across, so you get 26 plus b equals 60. And now you just do 60, take away 26, and you're going to get 34. And that's it, guys. That's literally your a and b covered. So that Shanghai Maglev train, ooh, this is a fast train, takes 8 minutes to travel a distance of 30.5 kilometers. Okay, that is quick. Work out the average speed of this train. Give your answers in kilometers per hour. Now, before we do anything, let's write down the speed distance time formula. So we say that the average speed equals distance over time. Now, this is easy. Now, all we literally do is put the distance, which is 30.5 kilometers, on the top and the time. But be very careful here. Notice how they want kilometers, which we have, per hour, which we don't have. We have 8 minutes. So to change 8 minutes to the hours, you can literally put on the bottom half of the time as 8 over 60. Because the converted to hours, just divided by 60. Now in your calculator, literally put all of this at once. Don't, don't bother simplifying. And if you do that, you're going to get exactly 228.75 kilometers per hour. And that's what they want. And you get all that space of 3 marks. Okay, number 6. So the diagram shows the triangle PQR. Okay, and this is all done algebraically. Okay. In the diagram, all the angles are in degrees. So it tells us that the length of RP is equal to RQ. Now when they tell you this, this means that these two are isosceles. So we're dealing with an isosceles triangle which has equal lengths and equal angles. Okay? Which is important. So that means 3x plus 10 equals x plus 52. So I'm gonna put a little equal sign there, yeah. Now find the value y. Show clear algebraic working. Okay, so this is one of those kind of problems where they tell you to find y, but secretly you know you need to find the value x first. So let's equate these two. So we've got 3x plus 10 equals x plus 52. And then we just solve to find x. So minus x across and minus 10, you're gonna get 2x equals 42. Half of this, x equals 21. So that's nice and easy. So what you want to do here now is that since you know the value of x, which is great. So x is 21, so we're going to have um, this, actually no, the good thing about this one, because it's isosceles, if you work out one of the angles, you automatically have the total value of the other one. So working out the angle of Q, we know x, we can just put x back in, so it will be 21 plus 52, that's going to give us 73 degrees, and of course this is also 73 degrees. If you're not sure, just replace x with 21 for both of them and you should get the same result, so that's fine. Now we know that all triangles... Uh, all angles in a triangle must add up to 180. So we're going to have 73 plus 73 plus y must be 180. And now we just solve to find the value y. 
Adding up two 73s, that gives us 146 plus y is 180. And then minusing 180 from 146, you should get y, which is 34 degrees. So this angle is 34. Okay, number seven. So the diagram shows two water towers in Kuwait. Whew, Kuwait, I used to live here. Beautiful city, by the way, guys. So you've got tower A, which is 187 meters, and the real height of tower B, which is 147. So just a bit taller, sort of. Now, Ahmed makes a scale of both towers. That the height of tower A on the scale model is 90. So we're trying to say that this scale model is something you write on paper. So you're sketching this, which is probably here, 90 centimeters. In reality, it's actually 187. So you can kind of tell if you compare the real height to the scale, and we should always do this, real to scale, we can have um, 187 meters over 90. This will tell us how many times bigger it is in raw units. And, uh, and on the calculator, this is about two point something, yeah? Something really big, about two times bigger. Now, the question wants us to work out the height of, the, of tower B on the scale model. So since um, we know the scale factor between the real height and tower A, we can just use the scale factor of two point something and divide that from 147. So for tower B, we can say that the scale model is 147 divided by the scale factor, okay, which is two point whatever in your calculator. Um, what, you should, what you guys should do is never round up the value, by the way. You probably notice that you get a really bad answer. So if you're going to divide it, divide it against the whole fraction. And if you do that, you get an answer of 70.7 and then four eight six dot 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 now they want our answer correct to the nearest centimeter so round it up here so 70.7 rounds up to 71 centimeters and that's it guys that's all you do number eight <laughs> all right guys this is literally my favorite question ever so here we need to solve the simultaneous equations okay so we've got two pairs and the idea is and then this is just one method is to make one of the equations one letter from another equation of subject in this case, um, I'm going to take the second equation, so uh, this one here. And then you're going to substitute that equation into the first equation or the other equation. So let's let's look at the second force for a moment here. Yeah? I'm going to make x a subject. So I'm going to plus 4y across. So we're going to have x equals 4y plus 9. Now the reason why this is good is that once you obtain a value for y, you plug it here and you automatically obtain a value for x. We're going to come back to that layer, yeah? So now using this expression for x, we're going to substitute this into the first equation. In other words, you're going to replace this x with 4y plus 9. So this equation here becomes 4 times 4y plus 9. So remember, x became that. And then copy the rest of the equation. So plus 2y equals 9. Now all you do is just expand and solve for y. So expanding the bracket, you're going to have 16y plus 36 plus 2y equals 9. 16y plus 2y is 18y, uh, minus 36 across, so 9 minus 36 is minus 27. And then dividing 18 across, you're going to get um, minus 3 over 2, or minus 1.5. Both is good. And now, thankfully, you literally just substitute these, these um, values into this equation over here. So you're going to have basically x equals 4 times I'm going to pick the, the decimal, minus 1.5, plus 9. And then when you put this in your calculator, you're going to get a simple 3. So the answers are going to be x equals 3, and y equals minus 1.5.